Hey, I, I didn't see you there. Uh, right now, I am in Carp, a small rural community about a half hour drive from Ottawa, the capital of Canada. That building right there is actually a nuclear Cold War bunker. But it's not just any Cold War bunker. See, it's actually the Diefen bunker. And if you're not from around here, you probably don't know what that means. So this facility was built at the height of the Cold War for one very specific purpose to house then Prime Minister John Dief the Chief Diefenbaker in the event of a nuclear war. Diefenbaker, Diefenbunker, we have fun here. Now obviously Canada never saw combat, much less a bombing during the course of the Cold War. And after the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 91, the base was soon decommissioned in 94. After briefly being considered as the spot for a trendy nightclub and a paintball arena, eventually it was named Canada's official Cold War Museum and mandatory destination for all grade 8 field trips. And since 2017, it's technically the world's largest escape room, and it's very, very big, so I, I believe it. We didn't get out. But if you clicked on this video, you're probably looking for the answer to one very specific question. Did a biker gang try and buy this thing? Many years ago, my dad told me that very strange rumor, and it's so absurd and specific that it begs the question. Where did it come from? Let's find out. My first stop was back to where this all began. I went and asked my dad where he heard the rumor. Hey dad, I got a question. Do you remember, like a long time ago, you were telling me about the, the, the thing? Call. Turns out he doesn't really remember any specifics, but that he heard the rumor from his dad, who very likely read about it in a newspaper. And going by my grandpa's reading habits, it was likely the Globe and Mail. So I managed to find this article, which is only one paragraph long, about the Diefenbunker from August of 2001. A concrete relic of Canada's Cold War past is now officially history. A mammoth underground atomic bomb shelter nicknamed the Diefenbunker has been torn down for the same reason it was built, national security. The federal government got rid of the shelter in Penhold, Alberta, because more modern security threats, a biker gang, a racist group, and a suspected car theft ring reportedly expressed interest in it. The demolition was completed last week. Okay, so there's a few things going on here. We now have a general time frame, August 2001, but we've also opened several new cans of worms. For one, the location is listed as Penhold, Alberta, but also that it was demolished as someone Currently filming at the Diefenbunker, I'm beginning to think this article knows something I don't. Uh, and finally, we have an even more absurd rumor that not only did a biker gang want to buy the bunker, but that a racist group and a suspected car theft ring also expressed interest. I'm beginning to have some doubts. A quick trip to Wikipedia clarified a bunch of things for me, but namely that this wasn't the only Diefenbunker. See, there was nearly 50. In 1958, John Diefenbaker announced Project Ease, which, at least on paper, was supposed to be a network of radio comms towers across the country, when in reality it was a network of top-secret nuclear bunkers designed to house the various provincial governments in the event of nuclear Armageddon. And for much of the two-year construction, many of the workers didn't know what it was they were building. Now, here in Ottawa was the centerpiece, a four-story facility that could store 535 people for a period of 30 days, and it could withstand a nuclear blast of 5 megatons at nearly 2 kilometers away. At least that's what the plan was. At one point during construction, a reporter for the Toronto Telegram rented a plane and flew over the construction site to take pictures. It seemed odd that a radio comms tower required 78 toilets to be installed, and from that point the cat was kind of out of the bag. Construction hadn't even finished yet, and already the top secret location was a front page news story. In the end though, it wouldn't really have mattered either way. The Soviets had very quickly demonstrated bombs that were ten times stronger than anything that could survive. And even funnier, Diefenbaker himself actually refused to use the facility because they wouldn't let him take his wife with him. We stan a wife guy. But anyway, the fact that there were multiple Diefenbunkers makes a lot of sense. I don't know if you've ever looked at a map, but Canada is geographically quite a large country. Growing up here in Ottawa, the bunker in Carp has always just been referred to as the Diefenbunker, so that explains the Alberta question. It looks like one of the smaller bunkers, located in 
Penholds near the city of Red Deer is the place we're investigating. And luckily, the Wikipedia article gives us our next clue. The Diefenbunker that was located at former CFS Penhold in Alberta was decommissioned in 1994 and sold in 1999. When subsequent owners advertised the facility for resale, rumors began that a chapter of a criminal outlaw motorcycle gang, possibly the Hells Angels, was expressing interest. This prompted the federal government to repurchase the facility and have it systematically demolished and hauled away at considerable expense. Now that's an interesting tidbit. We get a name drop for a specific biker gang, the Hells Angels. Also, notice how the racist gang and the carjackers aren't mentioned here. I'm willing to bet that the biker gang rumor is the original and those two were added on through a game of broken telephone. Finally, we have one last new detail. The Globe and Mail article made it sound like the federal government already owned the bunker before deciding to demolish it. But this line in the Wikipedia article claims that the government had previously sold it and had bought it back. So my question is, who did they sell it to and can I find them? Now, unfortunately, there's no citation attached to this particular paragraph, but at least we have a firm lead to follow. Searching for Penhold Diefenbunker Biker Gang led to several blogs or news articles that say very similar things. There's still not much more in the way of concrete details. No dates, no names, just general rumors. The most useful article is one from 1997 by the United Press International. In it, we see a quote from RCMP Corporal Judy Best, where she says that there is a serious concern with fortified properties, such as the former Penhold Bunker, being purchased by any criminal organization. It doesn't name a biker gang in particular, but the article goes on to mention that around this time, the Hells Angels were making a westward expansion from Ontario and Quebec, and had recently taken over the local Grim Reaper biker gang. The Hells Angels are more than likely the criminal organization being alluded to by Judy Best. But most importantly, the article finally includes some dates. We learn that the base was decommissioned in 94, bought by two local businessmen in 95, and that by 97, the two men were selling the bunker on the internet. And by that point, rumors about the biker gang had already started. And if we refer back to the Globe and Mail article, the feds demolished the base in 2001. Looks like we got ourselves a nice little timeline. Let's see what we can find out about these local businessmen. Turns out, not much. I tried looking for any sort of record of sale of the bunker since I figured that would be accessible in some government database, but I couldn't find anything. I did find one article from the CBC, which states that a man named Lauren Weiberg made a bid to turn the bunker into a medical marijuana grow up. Only issue is, he lost the bid to a competing company in Saskatoon, and his redevelopment plans completely fell apart. It's unclear whether he actually owned the bunker at any point. So at this point, I remembered that I hadn't really looked into the demolition of the bunker, so googling Penhold Bunker Demolition finally led me to a website about Canadian civil defense history. And they actually had photos of the demolition confirming the fate of the bunker. According to this newspaper clipping, the demolition started in March of 2001, ended in August, and the demolition contract was awarded to a company called Kalor for a grand total of $800,056. Another history site had an even better newspaper clipping from the Nanaimo Free Press, and I really hit the jackpot with this one. The feds had apparently sold the bunker to two Red Deer businessmen in 1995 for a total of $472,000. But by 1997, the businessmen were already looking to sell it. It was during this time that the Hells Angels, the white supremacists, and the Miami carjacking gang had inquired about the bunker, prompting the feds to panic and buy back the bunker for nearly twice what it was sold for. A cool 1.25 million. Curious what the Hells Angels offered? 1.3 million. And from the sounds of it, the local community wasn't pleased that the bunker was demolished, rather than repurposed into something useful or fun for the community. And look, by this point, I was decently satisfied with what I'd found. I'd mostly figured out the timeline, gotten multiple newspaper clips, and even a concrete number of how much the Hells Angels had offered. But I was still holding out hope for an interview with the bunker's previous owners, or at the very least, I wanted a pair of names. But none of the newspaper articles had identified them, and after 20 years, the odds of these people still being alive was iffy. Uh, I was ready to give up, uh, and I almost did. So all of this is to say, you will not believe how I found the answer. I was collecting B-roll for this video and found a YouTube video tour of the bunker. And scrolling through the comments, my eyes nearly fell out of their sockets. My grandpa owned both bunkers 
in Pendleton. Uh, this discovery was followed by me desperately replying to Brock's one-year-old comment, hoping to high hell that he'd get back to me. Uh, in the meantime, I started adding the last name Warkenton to my Google searches, and that was the missing piece of the puzzle. I managed to pull a yearbook from a local high school, and I found this. Harvey Bunker Warkenton. Folks, we got him. I think that's our guy. Now Brock eventually did get back to me, and confirmed that Harvey is his grandpa. Not only that though, according to Brock, his grandpa was approached by none other than Lucasfilms to use the Penhold Bunker as a set for the Phantom Menace. However, the deal fell through when it became clear that they would have to rip the bunker apart, and that his compensation would be in the form of leftover memorabilia and set pieces, as opposed to actual cash. Now, feel free to take this part with a grain of salt. Obviously, it undoubtedly feels a little too good to be true, but the Ottawa Bunker has been featured in at least one A-list movie with Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman, so I don't know, and the timelines match up, I'm, I'm willing to give this one the benefit of the doubt. Finally, Brock provided me with a link to a 2006 Toronto Star article that quoted his grandpa Harvey stating that yes, the Hells Angels expressed interest, but that he would never actually sell it to them for obvious reasons. So I don't know about you, but I'm willing to take that as a win. This has gone from rumor to, I would argue, verified fact. The Hells Angels really did try to buy a nuclear bunker for $1.3 million. Thanks for sticking with me.